Hey everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to my new Let's Play series. This is Doki Doki Literature Club, which has been getting a lot of hype and rave reviews from people. So I figured I'm a little late on jumping on the bandwagon, but it's better late than never. And I want to give a warning to those of you who don't know about this game. This may seem like a cute Japanese dating sim, but it kind of falls more into the psychological horror type of game. So if you're easily disturbed, or you're younger, I would recommend not watching this. So, um, I really don't know too much about this game. I have not read any reviews, I have not seen any walkthroughs, have not watched any Let's Plays of it, so I'm going in as blind as possible, except for knowing that it's, uh, it's a little bit deceiving with, uh, with the whole cutesy look to it, and not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous because I don't do well with horror games, but, um, uh, we're into it now, so we might as well get started. Okay, entering my name. Well, of course, it's going to be Rose, as it always is. And just like, it's it just seems so sweet right off the bat. And to know what the type of game it's going to turn into. Um, i got to try not to let my guard down. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori. Sayori? Already, with the bad pronunciation of the names, I'm so sorry. My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long? We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ah! I overslept again! And there's the little, you know, trope of schoolgirls being late for school. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Rose. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. And I know you guys will probably correct me in the comments. Please do. Um, I hate when I mispronounce names, but like I said, because I'm going into this blind, uh, I'm just reading it the way I think it's supposed to be. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Rose, have you decided on a club to join yet? And then, of course, that trope with, like, you gotta join a school club. A club? I told you already, I'm really not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me while I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Does that sound like a lot of you out there? Sounds a little bit like me too. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Um, okay, I think, if I remember, it's not in employment, education, or training, I think. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? I can't say I'll try, but I'll try to try. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind a little, uh, sorry. At least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. 
I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Oh man, this is so weird playing this game, like knowing what it's gonna turn into because I've played so many, like, dating type sim games like this before and they all are the same. And to know what's gonna turn on its head, you know? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I looked around and realized I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori? Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Eh? Mini? Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori really is that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Man, this character is just like me. <laughs> if there's desserts involved, okay, I'll be there. Yes, let's go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. In this case, I wonder if it's literally, because I have no idea what to expect from this game. I, de I dejectly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Alright guys, get ready for me to butcher some more names here, probably. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Can I just call her Girl One? Do I have to call her by her name? Because I can actually pronounce Girl One. <laughs> Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? <laughs> oh god, I'm supposed to be a boy, that's right. Maybe I shouldn't have called it myself Rose then. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Rose, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls because it's a dating sim, sorta, not really. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is the one I uh, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. And the tropes are starting to come out. Ah, uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Manika, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Rose. Manika smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monika was probably the most popular girl, girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monika. <laughs> All these people are probably going to die, so don't get attached. Come sit down, Rose. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monika. Monika, Monica... I'm guessing it's Monika. Once again, you guys will can let me know how to actually pronounce these names. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little excited. Then how, I how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. 
As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so there's one space next to Manika and another space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly mar uh, marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! <laughs> Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. Well, I like this girl already because she can bake. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Well, you know, just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monika. I follow. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. She's probably like, hurry up and take a goddamn bite already. <laughs> Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Oh god, she's like such a sundere. Oh my... I haven't watched anime in a while. I think that's... It's sun, sundere, where it's like they're all like... It's not like I like you or anything, baka. That type of personality. Yeah, haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. I thought you technically did. Sayori said, Well, maybe. But not for you, you know, dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean that, you know... I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. I'm in the literature club, and I don't like to read. No one has brought that up yet. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monika raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monika that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monika, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Ah, uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monika really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monika must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. When, when all those girls look at me, it makes me think I'm about to be sacrificed or something. So, Rose, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, um... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. 
I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Uh, not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's small smile. Uh, sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the worlds of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with it with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. That's kind of my thing, like I'm not a big reader, it's very hard for me to find new books to read, but I love, like, um, psychological thrillers, like murder mysteries, um, psycho uh, psychology related things, so I, I think I like Yuri. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Is this some- is this some fourth wall breaking? Is this them saying the same thing about this game? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful of changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. I wonder if the books that they read are going to, like, come into the world? I, Like I said, I really don't know anything about this game. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and give that back. Fine, fine. Your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori sides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I am not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki adverts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Oh, not a confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monika. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Rose? Monika smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori might have convinced me to stop by, because of cupcakes, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Rose, you all... Uh, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. 
Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Well, we can't let her know then. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Hopefully this won't be a decision I regret. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monika looks over at me once more. Rose, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre- or er, Monika? I- once again, don't know how to say her name. With my uh, mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey Rose, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. <sighs> One thing I'm bummed about, I know this isn't a really a dating sim, but like, I like the, the whole aspect of dating sims I like to do is pick choices of what to say, and I hope I get to do that at least a little. With that, the two of us depart the classroom or club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Moni uh, Monika. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. I already have to kind of pick someone here? Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh, where's where's Monika, though? I kind of like Monika. I guess if I have to pick someone, I do like Yuri. Uh, let's do... Uh, well, she was talking about... Mm. She's talking about like horror and uh, fantasy worlds. So I think with Sayori, she would like things like party and shopping. And I feel like um, Natsuki would like, you know, all the cute things. So let's do disaster. <laughs> um, oh boy, I hope someone likes this. That's not a good start. Uh, journey? Oh boy, um... I don't want to say anger, I feel like that's a little... Okay, let's go with anger. Fantasy, yes. Um, Vertigo? I have no idea, this is gonna be the worst poem ever. Ambience? I don't want it to be all like... It's, like, sad and depressing, so... Uh, embrace? This poem is gonna be all over the place. Inferno. Intellectual. I'm really curious about how this is going to, like, come back later and, uh... Kick me in the butt. Um, horror? Because she did say she liked horror. Oh, they make- I just noticed that they make kind of the little reactions based on who likes what. Um, dark? Oh, Sayori likes that. Oh, shoot. I can't believe I just noticed that. Um, jeez. Okay, so far my choices seem to be leaning towards Yuri. Uh, universe, I feel she would really like that one. Adventure? Nope. Ah. So it seems to be it's either going to be Yuri or Sayori. Tragedy? Dang it! She's darker than I thought. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Existence? Landscape? 
Okay, it's it's kind of it looks like it's kind of gonna be a draw between Sayori and Yuri. I guess Monika, I wasn't able to make one for her. Hi again, Rose. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> what if she just reads the poem? It's literally I just put the words like nothing. It's just like horror, inferno, and she's just like get out of my club. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Rose. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making your dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Natsuki finds herself stuck between seeing Manika and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Rose always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without even without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. God, I sound like a slave. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Rose can become good friends too. Um, okay. I'm af I'm almost afraid that the girl I'm going to be going after is the one I'm gonna, like, doom to some horrible fate. Sayori? Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone settled in, I expected Monika to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monika are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Oh, do I make my choice about who I want to talk to? I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. Does the game somehow know who I want to pick? Is it just based on the poem I wrote and who seemed to like it the most? Or is the game just, like, effing me with me right now and that it somehow knows? I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, 
Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I, I just happened to buy two of them. Oh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Mmm... Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. Oh no, is this foreshadowing right now? That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Uh... Yuri gently, uh, Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of this sort of thing, Rose? Actually, that sounds like a type of book I would read. No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So, I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Oh. That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. What are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Oh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Oh, alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Oh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Oh, uh, I guess I made s it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Whoops. Uh, ah! What did I do? Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. Uh. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. 
It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a little bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Yeah, this... <sighs> for me... <laughs> All I'm thinking is, like, what if one person is a really fast- like, I could see Yuri being a very fast reader. So, I would not- this- this is a terrible idea <laughs> from, like, a practical standpoint. But I know it's a dating sim, so that's not the point. That's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she's finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second-guesses all the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent in some of your mannerisms. Ah, uh, I see. Yuri remained silent for a moment. But Rose? That's probably... a terrible thing to have in common with her. Oh, my stupid mouth. Oh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I mean, I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Oh no, what am I doing? Oh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I, okay everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Oh. Yuri ex uh, exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if I haven't, uh, if you haven't been looking forward to this. Oh, it's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read with you? Um, uh, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm... In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? <laughs> yeah, it's probably not any good, though. Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't find much inspiration since I'd never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't we find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monika enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monika wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monika's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Um, well, I guess since I was kind of aiming to have Yuri like it, I'll... Although I'm not sure she actually will, because it was kind of divided between Yuri and Sayori, it seemed like, of who would like it, but let's go with Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, she's like, this is sh <laughs> As Yuri reads the poems, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Wow, wasn't expecting exceptional. Eh, what was that? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but that ends up covering her whole face. Uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's, uh, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? 
Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. Oh man, now she's just breaking it down, being like, she thought I was all experienced, and now she's like, nah, you're just a noob. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um... Basically, if it's not about cute stuff, then she's not gonna like it, because she's gonna hate my poem, if that's the case. Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Oh boy. Uh, Lost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. I think that's what it says. Uh, I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking of that at all, though I did have a little bit of trouble reading it. But it took you a long time to read. It's because I'm dumb. Um, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm, I'm really glad you like it. I would have no idea whether a poem is really good or not, so I'll just go with him. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. <laughs> She's like, cause you're dumb dumb. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Rose. She's like, God, you are dumb. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being sim symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. Oh god, this sounds dark. I hope this isn't foreshadowing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? Uh, it's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Rose. Once again, I have to try not to get too attached to these characters because bad things are going to happen and I'm scared. <laughs> Me too. But these games are so good about making you connect and, and get attached to characters. Alright, I guess we'll get Sayori out of the way. 
This is a good poem, Rose. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid you wouldn't do it seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you just wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in this club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Rose. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the, uh, sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. We'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you, ta uh, are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or, how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bound to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. This was so much fun. Monika's the best. Oh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Alright, let's, uh... She's gonna hate this poem, I feel like. She's gonna give me so much crap for it. Rose, if you're not gonna take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? Man, I knew she was gonna be harsh, but, uh, that was a little much. If you're still proud of that first poem when you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Really? She gets on my case about my crappy poem. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. No, I don't. <laughs> what? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. 
Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Alright, so let's see what Monika has to say. Hi, Rose. Having a good time so far? Oh, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Don't worry, Rose. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's the sort of barrier that we'll learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monika my poem. Hmm. Great job, Rose. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Good words to live by. That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes that kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. Well, that's kind of what I was going for. I was hoping Yuri would like it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little more biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Uh, except I kinda do, right? Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You seem pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I'll always feel that, feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Oh, this one's a little bit longer. Hole, oh, hole in wall, it couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like the film left out in the sun. But it's too late, my retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And... And he, on the other side, was looking in. Dang, that's deep. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. I wonder if uh, the things that are in the poems are gonna come out sometime later in the game. I don't know. That sounded- that poem sounded kind of dark, too. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monika's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. 
so just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew, I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I had anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. I don't know, Yuri seemed to like it. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. Well, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure mine is better than Sayori's. Just saying. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Manika are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is... cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant... The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Oh, these two don't seem to like each other very much. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Rose did, too. So based on that, I gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. And Rose liked my poem too, you know. Oh no, am I gonna have to like... They're gonna come up and be like, whose did you like more? He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh... You... you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Rose appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? Oh no, I'm gonna have to pick. Well, I mean, the choice is clear. Natsuki's kind of a jerk. No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ugh. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Rose started showing up. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, you guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Rose? She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Rose. Wait! There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Rose? Uh... Well... Am I gonna have to make a choice now? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Well, I mean... The choice is clear here. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm, I understand. Yuri? Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. 
That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Uh... But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Yeah. <sighs> Natsuki clenched her fist. In the end, nobody had taken her side. Oh no, did I, like, doom her to something horrible right now? She's trapped, and at this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I ended up feeling- I end up even feeling bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to- You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatched her own poem up from the desk and stormed out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki. She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri had her chin burrowed in her, buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, Rose. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as part of this club now. Mm, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said? About, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, what? Oh, about her boobs. What thing did Natsuki say? Um, well, never mind that. I'm not gonna make- uh, I'm gonna mo- Bleh, sorry. I'm gonna go make some tea. Good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Rose, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job in pressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Rose, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it, either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. Oh, is this because I joined the club and now everyone's gonna start breaking down and bad things are gonna happen because I'm, I'm around? That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Rose, it's nice I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... Every day is going to be so much fun. <laughs> I don't think so. I think bad things are going to start happening soon. I'm just, like, dreading when it does. <sighs> it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah, let's do this. All right, so I'm still trying to impress Yuri. She's definitely the one I like the most so far, but like I said, I'm afraid that I'm dooming people by going after them. Uh, let's whisper. Oh, dang it. Uh... 
Uh, same things are popping up here. I don't want to keep picking the same things. Uh, wrath? Empty? Oh, dang it. Okay, um... Oh, shoot. Ah. Dang, Sayori's really liking this. Okay. I feel like the bigger the word, the more that uh, Yuri will like it. Lance, uh, a tone, a tone. Like, words that are a little bit more, um... It's like they said, Sayori likes things that are more black and white about describing things, whereas Yuri likes things that are a little bit more vague. Uh, infinite? Uh, oh, shoot. Uh, incongruent? Uh, yeah. Da, 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 da. I'm putting so much effort to this. I wonder, like, how much of a difference it really makes? Okay, I'm starting to kind of get a feeling for how Yuri likes things now. Melancholy. I feel like she definitely liked this word. The fact that she responds to so many words that are like kind of darker, a little nervous. A little nervous. Okay, I think that definitely leaned more towards Yuri. Alright, another day passes and it's time for the club meeting again. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Rose. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. It's a pretty simple way to get you into a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway, because you're simple. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Oh dang, got shut down, eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, okay, what, what girl would actually just open up her purse for a guy because he asked her to? I would never do that. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah, uh, oh, that's why. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you planned conveniently forgot that you spent all your money so I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Ugh. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. That was harsh. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't know she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, oh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Rose to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved in like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Oh, she's getting it from all sides. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got to absorb him into my book. Uh. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. <laughs> that. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess that's a, there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. Ugh, she knows... Me? My character so well, though I would be the same way, like I said. 
So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Oof. Oh, that scared me. See, if that little thing scared me, I am like so nervous about what the rest of the game <laughs> is going. Because I'm wearing headphones, so if there's any jump scares or anything, it's going to be bad. Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A, a cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. You're going through a lot just over one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Oh my god, this girl. Jeez. Bakers can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Um, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. I had a feeling that was coming. Hey! Did you just seriously just do that? Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Once again, this game is lulling me into false sense of security with all this like cutesy happy stuff. And I'm just like, when is the bad stuff going to start happening? Monika, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monika isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monika anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Oh no. I have a feeling bad stuff's going to start happening. I spoke too soon. Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. Oh, I gotta like a pit in my stomach right now. She's pretty popular after all. You don't think she... She has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Oh, oh. I was like so afraid something horrible had happened to her, but oh. Oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Oh, I was. Eh? Monika chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monika quizzically glances at me. Oh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Um, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monika. Uh, I don't really. Okay, this is suspicious. I just started- I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monika. That's... Monika looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Rose. Monika smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous es uh, escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. <sighs> 
Hey, Yuri. Eh? Uh, I suddenly noticed Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. If that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that makes my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Oh, I could use a cup of tea. My throat is so sore from just talking for the past like hour and a bit. Maybe I should wrap up soon. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Oh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Where are you two off to? Huh? We're just- Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monika. We're just filling the water pitcher. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monika, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell- uh, or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Rose in club activities? Uh... My mouth gapes. Uh... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, it was weird hearing Yuri be so... Blunt about it. Hmm. <laughs> then let's go, Rose. Is there some sort of issue between these two as well? Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room. Exits the room, and I follow. Alright, I think I've been playing long enough, because this is a relatively short game, and uh, I do want to get a few episodes out of this, so um, I will end it here. Nothing has really happened so far. A little bit of a slow start. Hopefully you guys are kind of trudging through this, uh, because I'm assuming it will pick up, and it's going to start getting crazy in the next little bit, so... I hope you enjoyed this episode, and stay tuned for the next one, and thank you guys so much for watching. Until then, bye.